Okay, we're to another episode of On the Rails from Off the Cuff. Today we have a really fun Seiko for you from, uh, you know, from Sakura Watches again with the deals and with the releases. Uh, they've had these awesome Mecha Quartz models in stock for quite a while. I've actually featured previous ones uh, in kind of years past, but this one to me might take the cake in terms of just having that really nice expensive look for not a lot <laughs> um, in terms of cost. Under 150 bucks, at least at the time of checking and filming this review. Uh, of course, there can be fluctuation within the US dollar to Japanese yen rate, but right now it's very, very cheap and uh, it looks absolutely like a million bucks. In terms of the type of watch, this is a chronograph, some key characteristics and design which you're looking for a chronograph. Of course, you're gonna have those external pushers to activate timing functions with multiple sub dials to measure elapsed time, often featuring additional scales dependent on the sub genre. In this case, you do get that tachometer scale, it definitely has a nice kind of motorsports vibe to it. Um, and you know, you also think about the fact that this is a Mecha Quartz powered watch and uh, there are really some notable um, brands out there that have come out with really awesome Mecha Quartz chronographs and have really upcharged in terms of, uh, you know, making them a little bit more overbuilt, adding some niceties like Sapphire and everything really, really solid. Um, but at the end of the day, they're not a Seiko. They're just, they just have a cool Seiko movement. Um, and of course, those watches can cost over 500 bucks up to around 700 for these very desirable movements. Uh, so it's really great to be able to get one of the watches from the brand that pioneered the movement. It's itself um, for a super affordable price, especially in a really handsome package like you see here that is extremely wearable and, uh, you know, let's face it, it it's kind of uh, very Daytona-esque. <laughs> so with all that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. All right, guys, this thing is handsome. Look at the color play on here. It just feels so rich and lush. And then, of course, you do get that nice snapback feature because it is a mechanical drivetrain when it comes to that beautiful chronograph and uh, these buttons they're not just pushers that push a button that send an electronic impulse no they're mechanical pushers that will activate all of the little mechanics inside of the watch so it just has a certain level of engagement that is quite addicting uh, which is wonderful but when you get into the sizing here guys uh, this watch is only 39.8 millimeters in diameter it's only 11. Uh, six millimeters thick, which is outstanding for a chronograph. Of course, it is quartz, but again, for you to get something with a similar wear profile like this, um, you're going to be spending a ton of money unless you're going quartz. And then the cool thing about this quartz movement is that it is mecha quartz, so there's just a lot of fun there. And we'll get into some of the details of the movement a little bit later on. Um, also, everything is, of course, you're getting that brushed and polished. Very, very nice. You're getting a flat mineral hardlex. You're getting gold plated fixed the bezel there with that nice tachymeter scale. Look at that in the light. My goodness, it just, it. It looks luxurious. <laughs> um, and then you have a push-pull crown, and then you get to the back, and it is a solid case back. You're getting hollow end links, hollow links. Uh, there's a decent little taper there, though, on the bracelet that goes down to 18 millimeters. Um, and uh, when you get into the case back, although you can't see it, and even if it was an open case back, there's not really too much to look at, you're going to have the Mecha Quartz Seiko 8 T. 63 movement which is actually a nicer more updated mecha quartz movement um, and so it still has quartz timing but with that mechanical chrono action you're getting uh, one fifth second intervals in terms of that sweep so it's going to tick five times per second and then you get a multi-headed lever um, system which uh, disengages which gives you that snap back again to instant zero similar to a traditional chronograph gear train now, when we get into this dial, guys, 
applied indices, you're getting that brownish gray sunbrush dial, you're getting the date uh, nicely tucked away at that four and a half, which is not uncommon when it comes to chronographs. Um, but you know, I, I know a lot of people probably prefer it without a date, but you know, there's also people who won't buy a watch if it has no date. So uh, it's probably more of a deal maker to people to not have a date than it is to have one. Uh, so at least when you have one like this, where it's you know pretty nicely balanced and integrated, um, you know, it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. It's not cutting into any other indice or any sub dial. I, I dig that. Um, and then of course you're getting the polished and loomed hands there. Uh, water resistance to 100 meters, another really strong, uh, you know, capability that you're going to get with this model, um, which is, yeah, hey, it's it's going to be pretty capable. Uh, so if you take this thing, it gets rained on, you're doing dishes, whatever, you're going to be fine. It also has 20 millimeter lugs, so that means, yes, you can put this on a beautiful chocolatey brown rally strap, and it's going to look absolutely fantastic. Uh, and then, of course, yes, the OEM bracelet is hollow, but but it looks pretty nice like it has that look to it definitely you know that you would see with a presage or a grand seiko uh with the polished highlights there in the center so kind of a faux five link design uh and you know like you would expect for something that's hollow it's gonna just have uh push pins and everything the nice thing is you are going to get a little bit of micro adjust there as you can see um but honestly this thing is is just eh, wow check that out <laughs> i mean how do you beat that so let's actually get it on the wrist and see how it wears all right guys as you can see on my seven and a half inch wrist this thing wears really really great of course if i get it a little bit too close to the camera you're gonna get some lens distortion it's gonna appear a little oversized so what i'll do is i'll keep my wrist nice and low and away from the camera but i'll just tighten up the shot there and you can see it is nicely centered again if you want something that's gonna wear like this you are gonna be paying Daytona money because they just don't make them like this. This is just such a rare uh, watch in terms of just having really great proportions, nice styling, again, that in-house movement. Um, you know, it's 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 not luxury by any means it's not even high end but man does it give you those vibes and it's just a fun watch you can throw on do whatever and you know what it might catch a couple of looks and there's nothing wrong with that because it still has kind of a fun story because it's not like somebody can just buy one of these at uh you know the department store this is something of a connoisseur's watch this is a jdm model that you kind of have to hunt for which i think is really great and you can see man look at how flat that lays and yeah it's not again it's not super hefty it's not super expensive uh it's not luxurious by any means but the beautiful thing about it is you're getting so much of that aesthetic and that look and that appeal um while not really paying a whole lot for it guys let's face it i mean at under 150 bucks that is pretty strong value in terms of that proposition so very very cool let's go ahead get it off the wrist though uh, set up for some low light transition loom shots and closing thoughts okay we'll go ahead and hit the lights here <laughs> as you can see it is a seiko so it has luma bright and no you know it's not some crazy dive watch um so it doesn't really need a lot in terms of the application of loom uh because the quality of loom is definitely there even with that kind of minimalist uh application so very very nice uh not a huge amount or area of loom but you can see even in mixed lighting because of the polishing because of the shapes and the facets that are on those indices it's actually still quite legible uh even if you discount the loom uh, you can really see at different angles it just is going to grab light. Uh, so it's nice to see what this is going to look like in less than optimal lighting because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to find yourself coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, you know, maybe hanging out underneath the shade of a tree or just spending some time in your favorite automobile. So it's nice to see how these colors textures and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting to even include some harsh high contrast lighting which typically could expose any type of production defects and at this price point you might think there would be a lot to find but you can see the light is just 
you know, it's so uniform in terms of the way it's gliding over the brushing. No, it's not luxury level hairline brushing, but it still does the job. And no, it's not Zeratsu polishing, but it's still a nice glossy finish there in terms of the high polish. Even with all the fingerprints I left on this watch, it's still quite immaculate and really fun to look at. Check that. Ooh, look at that. It's just... The way it plays with the light, the tones, the grays, the warm coppers and gold and hues. It's just, this thing is a looker. I dig this. I, I'm now kind of like, I, I, I kind of do and I kind of don't want Seiko to do an expensive version of this because I, the last thing I need is another expensive Seiko. But man, this thing rocks. I, I really, really enjoy it. And then the price point just makes it that much greater. So guys, closing thoughts on the wrist. This wears very, very comfortably. And, you know, it might be small-ish depending on how big your wrist is. Um, and, you know, when you have it in hand, it might even give you kind of small-ish vibes. But on the wrist, it is really, really really quite perfect. Uh, it's just a great classic racing motorsports aesthetic. Um, and then of course you're getting that addictive chrono action uh, that you can play with and kind of get your fidget uh, out of in terms of that Mecha Quartz actuation. In terms of model variants, definitely check the site links for current options and availability because they do have quite a few different variations. In terms of comparable models, you know, like I mentioned, many micro brands like Autodromo, Belmodo, Stratton, and even way more, you know, over the years have done all these really cool VK powered automotive themed chronos. And no discredit to them, uh, but there's, you know, this is really at a fraction of the cost and at an in house spec. So that's just, there's just something that's kind of fun. And there's something, especially when it's a model that, yeah, it's not mainstream. It's something that you do have to hunt for. It's a JDM only model. Even though it's not expensive, the fact is, uh, there's a certain level of being in the know to even knowing about this model. So if you have it on your wrist, there's a certain level of pride that you can have uh, regardless of the you know cost of entry. So I think that's a lot of fun. Bottom line, guys, again, it's, this thing's all about fun and style, and it's completely just in this affordable package. So uh, with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked the video, please do it like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.